welcome to St. Vincent College. We are ready to go for the game G. If necessary, game has become necessary. We'll run down for you the starters in the lineups here momentarily. Riley Asalone, the starting pitcher in this contest for St. Vincent. She brings ball one to Leah Wojtek, and we are underway. So winner take all between Teal and St. Vincent. Glad to have you with us. As uh, we are quick to the start time of this contest, had to scribble in our lineups. Going back to uh, both teams' head coaches for that. Next pitch is low to Wojtek. Two balls and no strikes. I'm Randy Gore along with Ryan Briggs. Teal 19 and 24 overall on the year. St. Vincent 28 and 14. The Bearcats the number one seed. The Tomcats the number two seed. Pitch upstairs for ball four on the 3-0 offering from Asalone and a leadoff walk to Leah Wojtek. So Asalone, we saw her in relief in the last game, pitching the seventh, and uh, no jitters for her in that seventh inning. Gave up only one hit, but a scoreless frame. A leadoff walk, however, to Leah Wojtek here in the first. Jessica Kelly has a back pick throw to first. Runner in there safely there. Oh, and a close play. Pitch was a ball to the batter, Kelly. But on that back pick throw, they nearly caught the runner, Leah Wojtek. And Wojtek a little bit slow getting up. Between games, her right shoulder was being looked at and checked on by the uh, medical staff here. Not sure she may have aggravated that, but she's back up. Both teams, of course, the story in this one, different starting pitcher for each team in this game. Yeah, Madison Fulmer getting the nod for Teal. As a strike to Jessica Kelly, who's the second baseman in this contest for the Tomcats. Let's quickly run down the order. Wojtek, you've already met Kelly in the batter's box now. Vanessa Falls on deck. Miranda Reisman bats clean up as Asalone brings the pitch. It's a fly ball to right. Flaherty makes the grab in fair ground. One away in the first. Very quickly, Bailey Hoover batting fifth. Megan Hepler, the DP. The flex is left fielder, Casey Beekle. Hepler hitting sixth, batting seventh. Uh, batting seventh, Quinn Ersprung, the right fielder, hitting eighth, Alyssa Kidwell at third base. Madison Fulmer, as we said, the pitcher, she bats ninth for the Tomcats. As alone, deals, fastball, hit to right center, sliding effort made by Shea Robson, but she cannot make the catch. Flaherty gets to it, comes up throwing, but it is a double for Vanessa Falls that advances Wojtek to third. Great start here for Teal. Obviously, Tomcats want to get a couple runs, but after being pretty much shut down last game, coming out with a lot of uh, fist and fire here in the early going, two runners on, getting into the middle of the order for Reisman and then Hoover. But Teal at least seemingly putting that first uh, game, the 7-0 setback, quickly in the rearview mirror. Reisman accepts a strike from Asalone. So Asalone, perhaps some jitters. She didn't show any in relief in the last game, but getting the starting nod and what is effectively the championship game. Deals a strike to Reisman now in front, nothing in two. Reisman was 0 for 3 against St. Vincent in game F. Takes high here, two balls and two strikes. Excuse me, one ball and two strikes, my apologies. Two in scoring position. With one out for Teal, fly ball to right, Flaherty toward the line, it drops foul. Count will stay one and two on the batter, Reesman. Keep in mind the next four batters, uh, Hoover, Hepler, Ersprung, Kidwell, all faced Asalone in the last game when she pitched the seventh inning. Teal looking for its first ever PAC championship. St. Vincent trying to win its second. Last title coming in 2016. Miranda Reisman, line drive caught by the pitcher Asalone. Two outs and the runners, to their credit, stayed put. Although that ball hit so sharply, how could they even get off the bag? Nice stab made by Asalone who does not wear the protective mask, which is uh, something that you, it's rare to see a pitcher pitch without that now. And, that was a very nice play, Asalone getting the glove up in self-defense, but it's out number two for Hoover. Pokes one foul behind home plate, straight back. Hoover grounded out to first against Asalone, leading off the seventh in the previous game. Part of an 0 for 3 contest. Two in scoring position, top of the first. 
scoreless so far. And a bounding ball that will get through the left side of the infield for a base hit. One already in. Runner at third held up. Late hold sign to Vanessa False, but it's one nothing Teal, RBI, uh, RBI base hit by Bailey Hoover. She advances to second on the throw to the infield. The classic seeing eye single there, a bouncer getting past Gurneal and Miller out into left field. Now, Teal making a, a switch in the order in the lineup. Hepler now heading sixth, Ersprung bumping down to the seventh spot. They flip flop. And now pitch getting away at the plate and scoring on a wild pitch is Vanessa False, 2-0 Teal. And also up to third goes Hoover. Megan Hepler will come up the third baseline to talk with head coach Stephanie Fort in her first year as Teal head coach. Taking over a team that went 12-22 uh, and 22 overall last year, finished sixth in the PAC, but back to the postseason under Coach Fort, who spent the last three years as an assistant at Allegheny College. The Gators won 18 games and qualified for the NCAC tournament for the first time since 2015 under her tutelage last year. Also a former athlete at Allegheny College, Coach Fort. Fly ball, that will drop. Beyond the reach of first baseman Abby Ginter getting the starting nod as uh, the flex player for St. Vincent in this contest. It is a foul ball, though, and just a strike on Hepler, one and one. Two-nothing Teal in the top of the first. So quick strike here for the Tomcats, who were silenced in the last game by St. Vincent. A rarity for what is a prolific offense. And a foul ball by Hepler. Went off the catcher's equipment, and it looked like that went off the uh, well. Went off the body of catcher Kaylee Ludwig. She's going to need a moment to shake the cobwebs. And that came straight back off her mask, so it appeared. So an early start for Teal here. RBI single by Bailey Hoover. Vanessa False, who was held at third on the base hit by Hoover, does score a short time later on a wild pitch. Everything okay with Kaylee Ludwig. He's caught every game so far for St. Vincent. One ball and two strikes on the batter. Hepler, two outs. And a roller foul up the third base line. Hoover at third base, hoping to come across the pay station as well. I'm Randy Gore along with Ryan Briggs with coverage of every game of this year's PAC tournament. Fifth straight year for that. Our pleasure to be here. Hepler, liner to right, hustling in to make a chest-high catch is Kelly Flaherty for the inning's final out. But two runs in for Teal on two hits, a walk, a wild pitch, and one left on. After the top of the first, it's Teal two, and St. Vincent coming to bat. The biggest thing with Consolidated is their customer service. They treat you like a preferred client even if you're just starting with them. They've truly taken the time to understand who we are as a business and recommend the best product and services based upon that knowledge of who we are. Being able to rely on a technology partner like CCI to provide the fiber backbone means that our internet signal is completely reliable. I can't recommend any other parties. Consolidate is my first choice. When you're seriously in debt, you know that feeling. It returns every time the phone rings. Things are out of control. A job you were counting on didn't come through or you got sick. No matter how it got to this point, your creditors don't care or understand, but I do. It's not too late. I can help. If you're embarrassed, overwhelmed, or frustrated, don't be. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help, and you do need help. Please call me. There is a way out, and I'll get you there. Madison Fulmer spotted a 2-0 lead by her Teal teammates as we move to the bottom of the first inning. First chance for St. Vincent with a bat at hand. John Akaris, Kelsey Tobin, and Lauren Miller do up in this bottom of the first. Madison Fulmer this season, a 7-10 record 
in a 6.85 ERA. First pitch, chopper over the circle, fielded by Vanessa False, charging in and to her left, fields throws and retires Karras, one out. Great range by False, we've seen her make a couple of very spectacular plays. That one was certainly not routine, had to come get it and make a strong throw, strong arm. You can see why False is an all-region caliber player. Pitch low for a ball to Kelsey Tobin. Madison Fulmer, uh, as we mentioned, 7-10 and 10 record, 6.85 ERA this season. 69 walks in 93 innings, also 31 strikeouts. So uh, interesting for a lineup like St. Vincent. Do you take a few more pitches in this one, knowing that you have a hurler on the, on, in the circle that has a propensity to walk batters? I would think so. I would, think, I would be surprised to see them not... T- at least taking a strike early on because this is Fulmer's first pitching action of the tournament as well. It's been, uh, been a while since she's been out there. Teal, as the pitch comes in, Teal finished its conference schedule before everybody else because of the odd number of teams. Teal had the open date in the last weekend, so it's been a while since Fulmer has been in the circle. 3-1 pitch rolled foul up the third baseline, diving effort by the third baseman. Alyssa Kidwell, but it is a foul ball. Full count goes from 3 0 to 3 2. It's been a lot of time without action for Fulmer as a cue shot up the third baseline again. This time in fair ground, Kidwell fields it. Strong throw across to Bailey Hoover. And now two down to the bottom of the first. Here's Lauren Miller. Miller earlier against Teal in game F. We'll get to it in a moment as she bounces it to Kidwell. Another put out 5-3. And Miller had a good game uh, in game F going 3-4 for four with an RBI and a run scored. But a quick out in the first. And that retires the side. 1-2-3 for Madison Fulmer in the Tomcats. After one inning, it's Teal 2, St. Vincent nothing. We'll be right back on the PAC Sports Network. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact TimeAd Productions. TimeAd Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio television imaging and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. Visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. With two locations in Washington County at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and Trinity Point in Washington. First pitch strike to Quinn Ersprung to lead off the top of the second for Teal. Ersprung accepts outside from Riley Azalone. Ersprung in game F in the earlier meeting today, a short time ago between Teal and St. Vincent. She was 0 for 3 with three flyouts to right. So Kelly Flaherty, be ready just in case. Ball two now issued, two balls and one strike. Riley Asalone out of Falls Creek, PA, getting the starting nod in this contest. Gets a pop fly, caught in foul ground by the first baseman, Abby Ginter, and one away in the top of the second. Sends up Alyssa Kidwell. Kidwell 0 for 3 in game F against the Bearcats as well. As alone, second team all PAC last year, all tournament team selection. She went 9 and 2 in the circle last year with a 2.66 ERA. Numbers a little more elevated this season for As alone, but she brings a strike to Kidwell here. Three sport athlete in high school at Dubois Central Catholic, softball, basketball, and soccer. Ground ball off the pitcher, feel it by Miller. And a 1-6-3 put out again today. Seen that a couple of times now. And two outs quickly. That retires Kidwell. Up next, Madison Fulmer, who's the starting hurler this afternoon for Teal. 
As alone uh, talked about three sport athletes. She was two time first team all state in softball as a junior and senior, as a freshman. As she brings the strength to Fulmer, as a freshman, led the team, Dubois Central Catholic, to its first District 9 title in 33 years. That is a freshman. The team reached the state playoffs three times while she was there. Fly ball hit the deep center. Catch made on the run by Shea Robson. And Fulmer retired for a 1-2-3 frame. Score after one and a half. Teal two. And St. Vincent nothing. We'll be right back on the PAC Sports Network. Who do you think you are? Walk through these gates and you'll find out. It'll take, oh, four years. Four years of rigorous academics, of grand tradition, citizenship, of making friends for life, and let's not forget, having fun. While you're doing all this, we have a job too, to ensure your success. And make no mistake, we're good at it. Welcome to Bethany, a small college of national distinction. Now fully co-ed, Chatham University offers over 40 majors in the health sciences, sustainability, business, and the arts and sciences. Qualified undergraduates can also be admitted into our integrated undergraduate and graduate programs in physical and occupational therapy, physician assistant studies, and more. Live on our historic Shadyside campus or our Eden Hall campus, the first in the world built for the study of sustainability. Strong academics, Division Three men's and women's sports, one-of-a-kind campus locations. Chatham edu bottom of the second game g the finale of the pac softball tournament teal leading two nothing riley as alone alana sleeth and shea robson all do up for the bearcats madison fulmer the right hander in the circle brings strike one to riley as alone fulmer out of Elyria, ohio a senior with the tomcats Rise ball high, one ball, one strike. As a junior, did not pitch, made three appearances and two starts as a sophomore. A PAC honorable mention as a freshman back in 2016. Fly ball will bloop in for a base hit into right. Having some trouble with it was Ersprung, but no additional advancement by Asalone. She is a leadoff base runner for the Bearcats with that single. Alana Sleeth, the DP. <laughs> Offering from Fulmer is low, ball one. Now back pick throw to check on the runner, diving in safely is Asalone. Highly competitive PAC tournament this year. The only blowout of the tournament was the last game we had, 7-0 St. Vincent, as the Bearcats able to force this game G, game seven. Two balls and no strikes to Sleeth. Another one low, kicks away from catcher Reisman. That will allow the advancement of Asalone to second wound pitch. Sleeth 0 for 4 in the two games against Teal, but she has walked twice, and she's walked in her first plate appearance in each of the first two meetings in this tournament. And on her way there. and Strike at the knees. Three. Lower part of the zone, 3-1. That's, that's, uh, that's a 3-0 strike call there. Now the 3-1. Sleeth swinging away. Bounces it on the left side. False gets to it to her right. Throw on a hop, but gets in time. Uh, beating out a lot of Sleeth. So getting there in time, but as a fall, she throws up her hands in the dugout. Hey, didn't mean to throw it on a hop, but she got the job done, 6-3. The infield is dried out. It is very dusty, very hard. It's actually, uh, you know, our older viewers may remember how Ozzy Smith used to do that in the Cardinals, that long throw, use the turf to skip it in there. That's what False did right there, getting a perfect uh, throw over to the first baseman. The I it came up about uh, mid-thigh. The Wizard of Oz. Well, Vanessa False. That's not false, that's true. No, but you're right, false uh, uh, with a nice play there. So base hit, and now the ball going to scoop by. Ersprung in right field, so a single and an air. One run in, and all the way to third base, Shea Robson, who was the hero, one of the heroes in the last contest. She had four RBIs, 
She drives in one and advances all the way to third on the E9 by Quinn Ersprung. Ersprung had the intentions of coming up and throwing one home, but picked up the glove too soon. The ball rolled all the way close to the fence. And now Bouncer on the right side. Kelly will throw home and sliding in safely is Robson on the fielder's choice. And we're tied up now, 2-2. Two -two. Fielder's choice and a run batted in for Flaherty. Bringing up Ludwig. Still only one out. Little surprise that Fielders didn't take the out there here in the second inning of a, what is now a 2-2 game. And now you put yourself in peril for a much bigger inning for St. Vincent rather than getting the shore out. You would have no out, or you'd have nobody on in two outs here. Instead, a runner at first and one out. The play would have been close to the plate. Catcher Reisman was unable to hang on to the ball. She made the tag. Fulmer delivers. Foul ball off the left foot. Now, Teal continues the play, but even for us out here in the outfield, we could see that foul ball off the body of Kaylee Ludwig. 2-2 game. We're all even. Bottom of the second. RBI for Riley, or for uh, Shea Robson, rather. RBI single. And then a fielder's choice RBI for Kelly Flaherty. Strike offered from Fulmer. Nothing in two. But still only one out in this frame. As we have drawn even now. Bouncer on the right side. And Teal going to go to second. The throw pulls. Vanessa falls off the bag. Jessica Kelly off target. And everybody safe again. Fielder's choice. And an error, runners at first and second. Got to get one there. And that's now back-to-back -back plays. You, If you just make the play at first, you're out of this inning. Yeah, both times, ball hit in that direction. Kelly, that time, th the way she caught it, drifting and moving to her left, having to rotate her body, make a throw back to her right with a runner coming in at the base as well. Now first and second one out the door, open for a big inning. Strike to Sydney Gurneal. First pitch was a ball, one and one on the batter, Gurneal. Two runs in for St. Vincent with one out. Two errors a part of this inning for the Teal defense. And a pop-up sliding catch made in shallow center by Leah Wojtek. But she has that as a patented move. Another fine sliding catch. And two outs in this bottom of the second. You can perhaps see on the film or on the uh, on the video where the grass is a lighter shade of green due to the tarp being over. It does not get, you know, not as much photosynthesis going on. But uh, Wojtek was into the light grass just out beyond second base to make that catch. Fastball strike to Jonna Karras as we're back to the top of the order. Karras 0 for 1, grounded out to short of the first inning. And Karras rolls it through the right side for a base hit. Wojtek comes up throwing, it's cut off on the infield, is in the score is Kelly Flaherty, RBI single for John Akaris, runners at the quarters for the Bearcats, and it's 3-2, St. Vincent. The air coming back to haunt Teal, and also a couple of the, just the defensive misplays, maybe not errors per se, but you know, not that we marked air on the scorecard, but you know, this inning, the door opened, and St. Vincent has kicked it wide open, scoring three. A ground ball, one hopper, right back to the pitcher, Fulmer. She takes care of it, 1-3 to end the inning. But, yeah, indeed, the door left open by the Teal defense. Two errors and uh, maybe some questionable plays in terms of uh, what direction they went to in terms of trying to get outs, and that uh, allowed St. Vincent to... Uh, Capitalize for the big frame. Three runs on three hits, as we said, two errors and two left on. After two innings, it's St. Vincent three and Teal two. Whether you're a traditional college-bound student, busy adult, or an advanced degree seeker, Geneva College offers degree programs tailored to your professional goals and personal commitments. Online or on campus, you'll enjoy personalized attention and a supportive Christian community of inspiring scholarship. Complete your degree in business, engineering, education, counseling, or one of 50 other programs. Geneva College. Step forward. Leap ahead. 
Head to Geneva.edu to get started. Faith and freedom are far-reaching matters for us. The freedom to pursue a calling in life and the faith that it will make a big difference. The freedom to use the value of an education to pay it forward and the Christian faith to make it count. At Grove City College, faith and freedom create opportunities. And that's why faith and freedom matter. Teal scored twice in the first, St. Vincent three times in the second. So the Bearcats holding a 3-2 lead. We move to the third, and for the middle innings, here's Ryan Briggs. Thank you, Randy Gore. Top of the third, St. Vincent with a 3-2 lead, thanks in part to a pair of unearned runs in that three-run outburst last inning. But Teal does have the top of the order, and that's where things started in the first when uh, Teal scored twice, Leah Wojtek led off with a walk and scored, and she will be the first batter here in the top of the third, facing Riley Asalone. First pitch is a strike. Wojtek three for seven with two runs scored in the tournament against the St. Vincent Bearcats. Outfield very shallow for Wojtek. This one is chopped right back to Asalone in the circle. Throws a bullet over to first in time for the first out. Comebacker ended the last half inning. Comebacker starts this top of the third. Wojtek hit it hard, but a nice reactionary move by Asalone to kind of spear it to knock it down around her ankles and then took care of the rest, the easy stuff from there. Brings up Jessica Kelly, the second baseman, flew out to right in the first. She's 0 for 7 with the walk in the three games. They used to call it three-game series now with... St. Vincent here. Sure. Games D, F, and G. Sounds a lot like, a lot like my transcript. <laughs> I don't think so. You wouldn't be here otherwise. One zero to Kelly is high. Two and zero. With Vanessa False, who doubled and scored in the first, looming on deck for Teal. Asalone's 2-0. This one is driven out towards right center field. Flaherty going back and makes the grab for out number two. So twice today, Kelly has flown out to Flaherty. Two away for False, who doubled in the first. Doubled, later scored on a wild pitch. It's False's second double against St. Vincent here in the tournament. She's now four for eight. And she takes strike one. Two doubles, two singles for Vanessa False. Shortstop in the number three spot. This one looped out to center field. Robson went in and then goes back. It's over her head. False chugging towards second. She's in with another double. And just a half inning after the Teal defense was generous to St. Vincent. St. Vincent returns the favor. False on at second with two outs. It'll end up being a double, but it was misread in the outfield by Robson. She started in uh, quite a few steps and then tried to range back, and it was too late. Vanessa Fulce, a good strength with her swing, and she drove it out to deep center, just misread by Robson. Brings up Reisman. She hit a comebacker in the first, Miranda Reisman. Two for eight against St. Vincent in the tournament. Takes ball one. Championship game in the PAC tournament. St. Vincent looking to go 3-0 today. Coming out of the loser's bracket, Asalone's 1-0 pitch is taken for ball two. Well, the last time St. Vincent won a championship in 2016, this was the route they took through the loser's bracket. Asalone high, 3-0 on catcher Miranda Reisman with Bailey Hoover on deck. Pitch is taken for a strike, 3-1. Two outs, false out at second after the double. Pitch on the way, high ball four for Reisman. It's her first walk of the tournament. Brings up Hoover who singled in a run in the first and opened the scoring for Teal. Hoover two for seven. 
against St. Vincent in the tournament. First pitch is a strike to Bailey Hoover, the first baseman. Neither team able to go with their ace in this game, and we've seen a lot more run scoring in the early innings so far. Absalone paints strike two on the outside corner. 0-2 with two outs here in the third. False doubled, Reisman walked with two outs. Absalone's 0-2, just off the plate. Ludwig tried to frame that one, but it is ball one on Hoover. The Uniontown high product. 1-2 is high, 2-2. Two and two. Uniontown south of here, down in Fayette County, home of the Red Raiders. And this one bounced foul on the first base side. Count remains 2-2. Two and two. Just go jump on U.S. Route 119. It'll take you down to Uniontown. Yeah, hey, rather short trip from here in Latrobe. Hoover standing in, right-hand batter with Hepler on deck. The 2-2, two -two, looped out towards right field. Flaherty settles under it and makes the grab for out number three. Teal mounts a threat, but the Tomcats come up empty. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. Two and a half complete. St. Vincent leads Teal 3-2 on the PAC Sports Network. College, a creative, energetic place that's rooted in academic excellence, innovation, and tradition. Where motivated students become motivated graduates. Where so much is so close. Teal College. That's where. Teal College, an energetic place focused on your academic and personal success. Where so much is so close. Teal College is now enrolling for its new sports management, exercise science, and health systems programs, and more. For more details, visit teal.edu. Part of the order up for St. Vincent here in the third. Lauren Miller, the shortstop. Riley Asselone, the pitcher. And then designated player, Alana Sleep. 3-2, St. Vincent leading Teal. Miller grounded out to third in her first at bat. Miller now three for eight with a double in the three tournament games against Teal. Fulmer's first pitch fouled on the third base side. Teal defensive alignment, the catcher, Reisman, Hoover at first, Kelly at second, Kidwell at third, False, the shortstop, out and left is Casey Beekle, Wojtek in center, Ersprung in right. The 0-1 is a strike as Fulmer pulled the string on that one, 0-2. The defensive alignment is what we've seen throughout the tournament with the exception of Kelly and Fulmer switching places between pitcher and second base. The 0-2 is taken for a ball, 1-2. One ball, two strikes on Miller, the St. Vincent shortstop. This one driven out towards the right center gap. It is a base hit. Ersprung up with it. Miller hustling towards second. Throw in and diving in with a head first dive safely is Lauren Miller, a leadoff double here in the third. Hustling double as well for Miller. She wanted to all the way, was busting it around first. And as you had described, diving head first safely. A lot of dust coming up on the tag attempt by Vanessa Falls. Exciting play. But Miller with the leadoff base or with the leadoff double. Brings up Aslone. She hits a liner out to left. Grab made by Beekle. Beekle quickly gets the ball back into the infield. One away here in the third. Whenever Beekle has been tested, they've been some difficult plays. That was a uh, hot shot liner. Off the bat of Asselone. Sleep hits one on the right side. Kelly up with it. Swings it over to Hoover at first for out number two. Miller moves up to third. Now two away in the bottom of the third for Shea Robson. Robson singled in a run on the second. Her fifth run batted in of the day. She knocked in four in the first meeting, which was game F. Tripled and doubled in that game. 
This one popped up on the infield, grabbed by shortstop Foss, and that will end the third inning. A leadoff double, but Lauren Miller stranded at third. No runs, a hit, no errors, one left, three complete. In the PAC Championship game, St. Vincent leads Teal 3-2 on the PAC Sports Network. Begins here on a beautiful campus in southwestern Pennsylvania. At Waynesburg University, students become leaders in education, in business, in government, and science. They learn to tackle real-world issues with innovation and purpose, and are prepared for these roles within a community that fosters spiritual growth. Waynesburg University, a tradition of faith since 1849. You can't just wait for it. You have to go get it. You have to push yourself. Because limits only begin when hustle stops. You have to work together. Because you can't get there on your own. You'll have support. Because you're more than just a name on a list. And then you'll get there. That's success. And I hope it's ready for me. Because I'm ready for it. Megan Heffler leading off for Teal here in the fourth inning. The DP for the Tomcats lined out to right in her first at bat. And she will sky one foul on the first base side. Working against pitcher Riley Asselone. Making her first start of the tournament. Heffler two for six against St. Vincent in the tournament. Singled in the fifth inning yesterday, and that helped Teal take a 1-0 lead in the first of the now three meetings. Foul on the third base side. Count 0-2 on Megan Hepler. Hepler, freshman from Monotaw High School. It's in northern Butler County. Monotaw made a run to the state finals a couple years ago in Class 2A. Same high school as uh, our ace producer on the sports network, Miss Amanda Sloan. That's where she went to school, played basketball there. The 0-2 pitch driven out to right, going back and making the grab is Flaherty. That's one away. You know what the little fun fact about Monotaw is? What's that? It's the only school name in Pennsylvania that has all five vowels in it. <laughs> How about that? That well, is that is a fun fact. One away for Quinn Ersprung. Ersprung, 0 for 7 against St. Vincent in the tournament. Fouled out the first in her last at bat. So if Monitas ever on uh, Jeopardy or on uh, Wheel, of, Wheel of Fortune, rather, you can't lose if you buy a out. That's correct. <laughs> Ersprung has flown out to Flaherty four times in the tournament out in right field. Remember when we were young, when uh, occasionally somebody would buy a Y on Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> Sometimes Y. <laughs> Ersberg awaiting the pitch. This one is driven out towards left center field. It's going to one hop the fence. Picked up by Robson out at the fence. Heading into second with the doubles, Quinn Ersprung. A well hit ball, her first hit of the tournament against St. Vincent. And it comes at a big time. The tying run is in scoring position with one out in the fourth. Yeah, Teal struck for two early. St. Vincent has seemingly been in control since after their three run second, but this is very much a ball game. Teal only down by a single run. And now a runner in scoring position for Alyssa Kidwell. Kidwell grounded out in the second. That one was deflected by Asselone to shortstop Miller. Pitch in the dirt. Ball one. Ersprung got a big lead off of the base, but then retreated back to second. Kidwell went one for three yesterday against St. Vincent. 0 for three earlier today against the Bearcats. Tying run out at second. And this one fouled straight back by Kidwell, the third baseman. Kidwell, the number eight hitter. Pitcher Fulmer is on deck. And the 1-1. One, one. Low, 2-1. and one. Hepler flew out to right to start the inning. Ersprung a double to deep left center. She's at second with one away. Pitch to Kidwell. It is low. The count now 3-1 and one on Alyssa Kidwell.
three and one. Pitch from Asselone on the way. On the inside corner for a strike. Three and two now. One down on the fourth. Outfield straight away, fairly shallow for Kidwell. And Kidwell fouls one off. Might have been ball four. She'll stand back in against Asselone. Three balls, two strikes. Earth sprung out at second. And the pitch. Fouled out of play on the first base side. Count remains three and two. Aslan gets the sign, the 3 2 pitch on the way. This one is driven out towards left center field, and it is over the left fielder's head. Tobin could not get there. It's another double back to back. Doubles were tied at three. Ersprung scores on the double. Kidwell hit it almost in the exact same spot. Randy, they were playing her shallow, as you'd expect, but Kidwell gave it a ride. Indeed, Kidwell splitting the outfielders at left center. Closest to it was Tobin, but really had no chance. And so the back-to-back -back two baggers and Teal starting to uh, solve Riley Ass alone here in the fourth inning. And they have now drawn even 3-3. Brings up Fulmer, the pitcher. That's the sixth double of the season for Kidwell. Fulmer takes a strike. Throw back to second, and Kidwell is picked off. The second time today that a Teal runner has been picked off by the catcher, Ludwig, and now two away on the two to four pickoff. And what's even worse for Teal is that it's happened at second base. Both times. Two away, this one driven out the right, it's a base hit, it skips past Flaherty all the way to the fence. Fulmer to second, rounding second on her way to third. Throw back to the infield, the relay, and out of, th no, safe. Ball oh, wow. came loose. The ball came loose, or what do we have? I think Gurneyol thought she held on to it. The home plate umpire rotated out, so it is a triple for Fulmer. The umpire originally was going to ring her up, and that would have been very um, bad for Teal making the third out at third, but Fulmer ruled safe. Apparently, Gurneyo must not have had the ball secured in there. Yeah, it had to have popped out because uh, that was it. The play beater in our home plate umpire was going to indicate as such, but when it came out, he ruled safe. Back to the top of the order to Wojtek. She's 0 for 1 with a walk. Knappenberger is warming up for St. Vincent. We saw her leave the dugout with her glove in hand. Wojtek puts down a bunt. It rolls foul. And the count now will be 1 and 2 on the Teal leadoff hitter, Leah Wojtek. Tied at three, Ersprung doubled and scored on Kidwell's double. Kidwell picked off by the catcher Ludwig for the second out, and then Fulmer tripled the right. The one, two, high, two and two. Two balls, two strikes on Wojtek with Kelly on deck. Three, three, here in the top of the fourth of the PAC championship game. Wojtek lines at the left, it's a base hit. Teal has the lead, it's 4-3. Leah Wojtek comes through with her first hit of the game. Now Teal coming through here with extra base hits, and even though that one not for extra bases, a line shot for Wojtek brings home another. Well, you think about what this inning could have been without the pickoff. Kelly hits a one-hopper back to the pitcher, Asselone. She sends it over to first, and that is the third out of the inning. But Teal retakes the lead. Two runs, four hits, no errors, and one runner left. Halfway home in the President's Athletic Conference Championship game, Teal leads St. Vincent 4-3 on the PAC Sports Network. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready? Ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College. Are you ready?
with two locations in Washington County at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and Trinity Point in Washington. 7 8 and 9 for St. Vincent. Kelly Flaherty, Kaylee Ludwig, Sydney Gurneal. St. Vincent now trailing 4 3. Steele scored twice in the top half of this inning. First pitch is low for ball one. Next pitch comes in high, two and oh. Flaherty reached on a fielder's choice and knocked in a run in the second. She then later scored. Pitch on the way. Flaherty. High, count three and oh. Three oh on the way. And it is a little, little, a little bit inside for ball four. A four-pitch walk to start the fourth. Brings up Kaylee Ludwig, who reached on an air last inning. Ludwig with one of the big defensive plays that pick off at second from behind the plate last half inning. She squares the bunt. It's fielded, fumbled by Kidwell, picks it up from a knee, throws the first, not in time. Everybody's safe. First and second, nobody out. It'll be an E5 sacrifice for Ludwig. Yeah, still gets credit for the sacrifice, does Ludwig. That was the intent to move the runner. And then the air charged as it allows Ludwig to reach. And at that time, Kidwell just trying to hurry a little too quickly. Uh, hurried herself too much, if you will. Ended up fumbling that ball about. First pitch to Gurneal taken for a strike. Defensively, Teal having the wheel play on, leaving second base unoccupied. You wonder if Gurneal will swing away after having seen what Teal will do defensively. She squares. Tries to bunt it, bunts it foul. Now it's 0-2 on the number nine hitter, Gurneal, who flew out to center in the second. Gurneal went two for three with a run scored in the last game. Pitch is high, one and two. Flaherty walked, she's at second. Ludwig reached on the air. Ludwig over at first. The one, two bounces in, nice stop by Reisman. Count even at two and two. Two and two on Sidney Gurneal. Karras, the leadoff hitter in the order, is on deck. This one lined to left, it's a base hit. Up with it is Beekle. Runners move up 60 feet. Base is loaded, nobody out here on the fourth. Ball getting into left field rather quickly, so Flaherty held it third. But with the bases loaded and nobody out, why take chances? You're poised for a big inning here. And back to the top of the order as well with John Akaris. And the teal infield will gather in the circle along with first-year skipper Stephanie Fort. Flaherty at third, Ludwig now at second, Gurneal at first, and back to the top of the order for Jonna Karras. She singled in a run last time. She's one for two in the game. Now three for nine in the three tournament games with Teal. Madison Fulmer getting the start. She and the Tomcats have a 4-3 lead, but St. Vincent with a major threat. First pitch to Karras is high. And you wonder in each dugout how, how much rope will each starting pitcher be allotted. We know Knappenberger was warming up. This one bounced to the right side. Kelly with it, throws home for the force, and in time. Just in time to get Flaherty on the force play. That's the first out. Well, that's big, and that ball sharply hit on the ground by Karras, which allowed Jessica Kelly the opportunity to go home with it in an accurate throw for the force out. Ludwig now at third, Gurneal at second, and out at first is Karras. Kelsey Tobin stands in. She's 0 for 2. This one up the middle. It's a base hit. One run home. Here comes Gurneal with a go-ahead run. Throw cut off. St. Vincent leads. It's a two-run single for Kelsey Tobin. And the seesaw fair continues as it's the Bearcats that leapfrogs back ahead. 
You get the feeling <laughs> whoever has the bat at hand last might win this game. Uh, it, it's just... Uh, it's it's uh, back and forth, and here we go, another run. Pitch skips away. It's a wild pitch coming in to score is Jonah Karras. Third run of the inning. Tobin moves to second on the wild pitch. It is 6-4 St. Vincent here in the fourth. Miller doubled last time. She's one for two. She let off the third of the double. There's a little cue shot on the infield grabbed by False. Over to first in time for out number two. Tobin moves up to third. Two away for Asselone. She singled and scored in the second, lined out to left in the third. And she will line one out to left. Beekle fields it on a hop. It's a base hit. Fourth run of the inning. It is seven for St. Vincent. Now the Bearcats really busting out and uh, you have to wonder if you're Teal, how long you stick with Fulmer because St. Vincent solving her rather quickly in this game. This one driven out towards left field by Sleeth. Beekle comes in and makes the grab. St. Vincent retakes the lead. Four runs for the Bearcats. Came on three hits. There was one crucial error and one runner left on base. Four innings complete in the PAC Championship game. St. Vincent now on top, 7-4 on the PAC Sports Network. The biggest thing with Consolidated is their customer service. They treat you like a preferred client, even if you're just starting with them. They've truly taken the time to understand who we are as a business and recommend the best product and services based upon that knowledge of who we are. Being able to rely on a technology partner like CCI to provide the fiber backbone means that our internet signal is completely reliable. I can't recommend any other parties. Consolidate is my first choice. When you're seriously in debt, you know that feeling. It returns every time the phone rings. Things are out of control. A job you were counting on didn't come through or you got sick. No matter how it got to this point, your creditors don't care or understand, but I do. It's not too late. I can help. If you're embarrassed, overwhelmed, or frustrated, don't be. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to help, and you do need help. Please call me, there is a way out, and I'll get you there. Welcome back to St. Vincent, top of the fifth, and a change in the circle for St. Vincent as Celia Knappenberger, who's thrown 13 shutout innings today, Coming on in relief with St. Vincent leading 7-4. Knappenberger, four saves this year. This would be a save situation, Randy Gore. Yes, indeed. And, uh, yeah, we've seen her in the starters role this uh, entire tournament, but now in relief. And even though uh, Knappenberger obviously fatigued at this point in the day, this is the third appearance for her. She had the two starts prior, but uh, she's been the most effective pitcher. And now with a three-run lead, they go back to her. And she will face... Three, four, and five in the TO order. Vanessa False, Miranda Reisman, and Bailey Hoover. False, a pair of doubles in this game. She'll bounce one on the left side, grabbed by Miller. Throw over to first in time to get False. One away in the fifth. I'm going to bring up Miranda Reisman. She walked in her last at bat in the third, her last plate appearance in the third. Hit a comebacker to then pitcher Asalone in the first. Stephanie Ford coming down to talk with our home plate umpire. Something she seemed to be displeased about, but uh, nonetheless, we continue on. Oh, by the way, very quickly, Riley asks alone. Four innings today, gives up six hits, four runs, two earned, two walks, no strikeouts. And the first pitch is a strike. Breesman hits this one over to short. Quickly up with Miller, two away in the fifth. Pair of quick 6-3 ground outs welcoming back in Celia Appenberger.
Uh, brings up Hoover, who singled and flew out to right. 7-4 St. Vincent top of the fifth. The 1-0 is outside 2-0. Randy, they have as Hoover awaits the pitch. They called what we call a double for false in the first thing. They've called that an error by the center fielder, Robson, and then advancing to second. That's uh, very curious. Which inning was that? In the first. Yeah, I mean, Robson misplayed it, no doubt, but she never touched or dropped the ball. When you said mentioned the two unearned runs, I was trying to think back. Where was there an error? As this one's hit the Miller. Miller fields all three chances, and Teal retired in order. Celia Nappenberger, a strong top of the fifth. Three up, three down for Teal. We go to the bottom of the fifth. St. Vincent on top, 7-4 on the PAC Sports Network. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact Time Ad Productions. Time Ad Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio, television, imaging, and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. Visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. With two locations in Washington County at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and Trinity Point in Washington. Bottom of the fifth inning. And changes for Teal. Jessica Kelly comes in to pitch. She and Madison Fulmer switch places. Fulmer, the pitcher, goes to second. Kelly was at second. She comes in to first. And the first batter for St. Vincent here in the fifth is Shea Robson, who singled and scored in the second, popped out the short to end the third. 7-4, St. Vincent leads in the bottom of the fifth. Kelly's next offering is fouled off on the third base side. We'll get you the line on Fulmer momentarily. She went four innings. Both starters went four today. This one on the left side, picked out of there by Kidwell on to first in time for the first out of the fifth inning. And that will bring up Kelly Flaherty. Had a run scoring fielder's choice in the second. She also scored and then walked in the fourth. For Fulmer, four innings, seven hits, seven runs, but only three earned. One walk, no strikeouts. This one lofted out beyond second base. Drifting out to make the catch is Fulmer. That's a quick second out here in the fifth inning. I did not get a chance to speak uh, on that issue we were talking about. So in case there was too quick an inning, I didn't want to be caught in no man's land. That sounds good. Ludwig now standing in. She's reached on an error twice. Scored in the fourth. Reached on an error by the second baseman in the second inning, and then on a sacrifice bunt attempt, it was mishandled by Kidwell at third. She later came around to score. She's behind in the count, 0-1 here in the fifth inning. Pitch from Kelly on the way. Just outside of the zone, 1-1. One one. Kelly coming on in relief. It's her 10th relief appearance of the season. Now she's thrown back-to-back -back balls. It's a two and one count. On the number eight hitter, Kaylee Ludwig, Gurniel. The number nine hitter is on deck. Pitch from Kelly on the way, low, three and one. Three balls and a strike to Ludwig. 
Pitch on the way. Skied into short left center field and going out to make the grab is false. The shortstop. That is a harrowing third out in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Randy will have the play by play in the sixth inning when we come back. St. Vincent leads 7 4 on the PAC Sports Network. Well, who do you think you are? Walk through these gates and you'll find out. It'll take, oh, four years. Four years of rigorous academics, of grand tradition, citizenship, of making friends for life, and let's not forget, having fun. While you're doing all this, we have a job too, to ensure your success. And make no mistake, we're good at it. Welcome to Bethany, a small college of national distinction. Now fully co-ed, Chatham University offers over 40 majors in the health sciences, sustainability, business, and the arts and sciences. Qualified undergraduates can also be admitted into our integrated undergraduate and graduate programs in physical and occupational therapy, physician assistant studies, and more. Live on our historic Shadyside campus or our Eden Hall campus, the first in the world built for the study of sustainability. Strong academics, Division Three men's and women's sports, one-of-a-kind campus locations. Chatham edu 6th inning teal trailing 7-4 PAC championship on the line St. Vincent looking for its third win of the day and to bring you the final two innings here's Randy Gore thank you very much Ryan Briggs St. Vincent also looking for its second PAC title in the sport of softball right now in position for it but still Six more outs to get. Leading 7-4. Megan Hepler leads off for Teal. She is 0 for 2 today. First pitch swinging. Lines it into the gap at left center field. That'll be a base hit. Cut off by center fielder Shea Robson. A leadoff single for the Tomcats. Good start for the Tomcats. Hepler. Who's hit the ball pretty well in, in this game. Had the line out to Flaherty and also flew out to Flaherty. And we'll have a... Substitution. It will be the flex player, Casey Beekle, who's playing left field but not batting. She will enter in to run for Hepler, getting a little bit more speed out there here in the sixth with Teal looking to cut into the 7 4 deficit. And we've seen Coach Fort utilize that strategy with those two players, Hepler and, and Beekle, throughout the tournament. So nothing new there. So Beekle at first as Teal looking now to rally back, but now having to do it against Celia Knappenberger, who is in her second inning of relief. But she started the first two games today as well. Knappen Brings a strike. Knappenberger, this, in her previous four relief appearances, she's only made four relief appearances, she nailed down the save in each of them, so she's looking to go for five for five. 0-1, roller to short. Miller has it, throws the second out there on the first, not in time. But Lauren Miller to John Akera, 6-4 on the putout of Casey Beekle at second. Lead runner retired, Ersprung on with the fielder's choice. Alyssa Kidwell, RBI double for her in the fourth inning. Smacks one on the right side. Oh, and the catch is made on the pop-out. And a mental error by Quinn Ersprung. That was popped up, easily caught by Karras in recognizing that Ersprung was still heading toward her. Ersprung eventually threw on the brakes but was doubled up. 4-3. So a pop-out double play to end the inning. Your score after five and a half, St. Vincent seven and Teal four. Whether you're a traditional college-bound student, busy adult, or an advanced degree seeker, Geneva College offers degree programs tailored to your professional goals and personal commitments. Online or on campus, you'll enjoy personalized attention and a supportive Christian community of inspiring scholarship. Complete your degree in business, engineering, education, counseling, or one of 50 other programs. Geneva College. Step forward. Leap ahead. Head to Geneva.edu to get started. Faith and freedom are far-reaching matters for us. The freedom to pursue a calling in life and the faith that it will make a big difference. The freedom to use the value of an education to pay it forward 
and the Christian faith to make it count. At Grove City College, faith and freedom create opportunities. And that's why faith and freedom matter. Bottom of the sixth, St. Vincent. First pitch swinging and a fly ball to center caught by Leah Wojtek. Sydney Gurneal very quickly the innings first out. 7-4 St. Vincent leading. The Bearcats with a three-run second and a four-run fourth. Teal scoring two runs in the first, two more in the fourth inning. This has been a seesaw-type game, but St. Vincent has been squarely in control since their four-run fourth inning. Jonna Karras takes low for a ball. Is uh, back into pitch, by the way. No more Madison Fulmer. It's Jessica Kelly who is working in relief now. It could be to a, to a degree too little too late. Is another pop-up. This one caught in foul territory by Bailey Hoover. And two away now in the bottom of the sixth. That being said, Fulmer pitched pretty well. Not a lot of help from her defense. A couple of errors that resulted in four unearned runs and a couple other just... They weren't errors on paper, but poor plays defensively. Some base running blunders also, and the old adage, victory favors a team that makes the fewest mistakes, and Teal's made more mistakes here in this championship game. Uh, that's a great point, uh, especially in regards to Fulmer. A lot of mistakes made behind her that certainly weren't her fault. Wojtek catching a deep fly ball off the bat of Kelsey Tobin. And a prompt 1-2-3 inning for Jessica Kelly in the bottom of the sixth. So last chance for Teal in the PAC Softball Championship as we head to the seventh. Your score, St. Vincent 7, Teal 4. College, a creative, energetic place that's rooted in academic excellence, innovation, and tradition. Where motivated students become motivated graduates. Where so much is so close. Teal College. That's where. Teal College, an energetic place focused on your academic and personal success. Where so much is so close. Teal College is now enrolling for its new sports management, exercise science, and health systems programs, and more. For more details, visit teal.edu. Top of the seventh, St. Vincent seven and Teal four. Teal down to its final three outs in this PAC softball championship. Madison Fulmer leading off, fouls one away for strike one. Nine, one, and two in the order. Fulmer tripled last time. Tomcats have a chance to get the big bats back up. Down three. Three outs away from the season being over. Fastball from Celia Knappenberger looking for the save, and it would be a gigantic one. Deals ball one. Already with a couple of victories as a starter. Knappenberger offers low in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Seven to four St. Vincent. The Bearcats capitalizing on teal miscues. Three runs in the second, four in the fourth. Pitch low again, now three and one. And if you're Teal looking to start a rally, a great way to begin that effort would be to get the leadoff batter aboard. And Fulmer taking all the way, looks at a strike. Count is full, three and two. Fulmer tripled in the fourth inning is one for two. Bounces one on the right side, handled by Jonna Karras to her left. Quick dart throw to first, and one out. Riley Ass alone back at first base. Knappenberger's in the flex position. She's being hit for by Sleep. So uh, Ass alone accepting that last throw, 4-3. 
Ball one to Leah Wojtek. Wojtek has reached twice in this game. Walked and scored in the first, singled in the fourth. Delivery is low to the left-handed hitting Leah Wojtek. Wojtek has had some fabulous defensive plays throughout this PAC tournament as well. Trying to keep hope alive for Teal. One out in the seventh. Three-run lead for the Bearcats. And an off-speed pitch for a strike to Wojtek, two and one. So St. Vincent coming the long way here in this tournament through the loser's bracket. Ground ball foul on the first base side toward Asselone, who did field it. The last time the Bearcats won a title in 2016, it was the same route through the loser's bracket. And a slow roller on the right side again. Karras handles, little shovel flip to first. Two outs. And St. Vincent knows that it needs only one more out. Jessica Kelly 0 for 3. Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that mom? Oh, okay. 7 4 St. Vincent. Two outs of the seventh. Strike one from Knappenberger. Knappenberger, the Sarver PA native, Knock High School product, freshman at St. Vincent, trying to finish it off. 0-1. Roller on the left side. Two hopper fielded by Miller. Throw to first on a hop in time. And the St. Vincent Bearcats, the 2019 PAC softball champions. Knappenberger coming in, Randy. Nine up, nine down, thanks to the double play in the sixth. As she nails down the save, St. Vincent returning to the NCAA tournament. Teal disheartened, as you might figure, watching on along the third base line. Valiant effort by the Tomcats is now high fives around here behind home plate. But uh, Teal, a uh, great effort to get to this point as the two seed, but they come up short as St. Vincent celebrating its second softball championship in the President's Athletic Conference. And now let the real celebration begin. And the Bearcats with big smiles around and deservedly so. We are going to take a break and we're going to try and stick with you for a little while, get you the uh, all-tournament team if we can. And so we will pause for a break and also hope to have some of that celebration as well. St. Vincent 7, Teal 4, and we will be back as, uh, again, we are a final St. Vincent PAC champions. We'll return in a moment on the PAC Sports Network. When you're in college, you kind of find out who you are. And throughout your four years, you develop yourself with all the different experiences, which leads into dedicating yourself to your community, to your family. So when you're a senior, you're coming out a well-rounded person. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests outside of the classroom and outside of the court or field. I've had the ability to get into different activities and organizations, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. Getting to be involved in a lot of different things, ranging from obviously being a student athlete to getting involved with my campus and my community, and not only being allowed to do that, but being encouraged to do that. The opportunity to be, to be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, to have the professors know me on a personal level, all of those things came together uh, very nicely in one package in Division Three. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. It really helps you develop thinking from other people's perspectives and looking at problems from outside the box. Division Three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. I've definitely learned how to really be myself. I found out, yes, I am actually a good leader, and yes, I can actually put myself forward because I am good enough. I can do it. Coming in 
to college. I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of different career goals and I've learned so much about myself that I was always like growing and changing. When I got to college, it forced me to step up and become more of a leader. And I think that was something I had the capability of doing. And forever grateful that being at a Division III school gave me that opportunity. You have to dedicate your time in the classroom. You have to dedicate your time in the gym, on the field, on the court. Our coaches and all the entirety of the athletic department, they valued the student athlete going out to community and trying something new and getting involved in campus life. You can get involved in so many different things. Um, so the possibilities are truly limitless for what you can do with your college experience. You can kind of make it your own in the Division III setting. So I would encourage people who want to have flexibility to pursue different interests and passions to go D3. And there they are, the... PAC champions in 2019, the St. Vincent Bearcats posing for their celebratory picture with the trophy handed out by PAC Commissioner Joe Onderko. And uh, the Bearcats coming the long way through this PAC softball tournament. They won their first effort yesterday in game B, defeating Geneva 6-2. Denied by Teal in game D. The Tomcats claiming a 3-0 victory. Jessica Kelly with a complete game shutout in that one. But the Bearcats in our first contest today in game E, beating Westminster 4-0. Following that up with a 7-0 win over Teal in game F to force the if necessary. And in a seesaw affair today, it's St. Vincent who outlasts the Tomcats 7-4. And uh, again, you can continue watching the celebration here on our video stream. And uh, we hope to get you the PAC All Tournament team. So we're going to we'll, we'll be as long winded as we can here in the post game show, hoping that we do get that information before uh, we say goodbye. But again, you can watch the celebration continuing. We'll pass along the scoring recap in this one. Uh, Bearcats with the win, improving to 29-14 and 14 on the season. Their year will continue now in the NCAA tournament. Teal's season comes to a close at 19-25. and 25. Leading off uh, in the first inning, Leah Wojtek uh, drew a walk after a flyout by Jessica Kelly. Vanessa Falls uh, reaching on what was ruled an E8, so we had it originally as a double. I'm leaving it as a double. Okay, so we're I've not seen it scored any other way on a play similar to that, so we'll we'll go with that. If if Ryan Briggs leaves it as a double, I'll uh, I'll join him in that. So a double by Vanessa False, and uh, that put runners at second and third. After a lineup by Miranda Reisman, Bailey Hoover singled in Wojtek for a one nothing lead. A wild pitch scored Vanessa False, and it was two nothing. Tom Katz. In the bottom of the second, St. Vincent able to take the lead with a three-run frame. Riley Asalone, a leadoff single. After a ground out by, ground out by Alana Sleeth, Shea Robson able to single home Asalone. Asalone advanced to second on a wild pitch, then scored on the Robson single to cut the score to 2-1. to one. Fielder's choice RBI by Flaherty. Scoring Robson, who did advance to third after her single. She advanced to third on an E9 on that play. And then scored moments later on the Flaherty Fielder's Choice RBI to tie the game at 2-2. Two to two. Kaylee Ludwig, Fielder's Choice ground ball, E4. Putting two on with still one out of the inning. After a pop-out by Sydney Gurneal, Sydney Karras singled home Flaherty for a 3-2 advantage. So St. Vincent with the lead at that point, but Teal, undaunted, would grab the lead back in the top of the fourth. A one-out double by Quinn Ersprung. She was doubled home by Alyssa Kidwell. Madison Fulmer tripled a short time later. Uh, Kidwell picked off prior to the Fulmer triple, so Kidwell was the second out being picked off 2-4 at second base. Then Fulmer's triple had a runner at third with uh, two outs. Leah Wojtek's RBI single scored Fulmer, and the Tomcats were ahead once again, 4-3. to three. St. Vincent, though, with the pivotal bottom of the fourth, uh, scoring four times in that frame. A uh, 
Leadoff walk by Kelly Flaherty, sack, bunt, and air. Ludwig reached on the air, and Flaherty to second. Signal by Sidney Gurneel, loaded them up. And uh, a wild, or a, a fielder's choice by Karras, uh, scoring a run, bringing home Ludwig. And it was uh, a 4-4, four, four, or excuse me, let me go back backtrack again. So we had a uh, walk. Error, sacrifice, single, bases loaded. Fielder's choice by John Akaris erased the lead runner at the plate, Kelly Flaherty, 4-2. So the bases were still loaded, but with one out. Then Kelsey Tobin with a two-run single, driving home Ludwig and Gurneel. St. Vincent with the lead at that point uh, by a run at 5-4. Wild pitch made it 6-4, John Akaris scoring. And then Riley Asalone with an RBI single, uh, tacking on another and it was 7-4 to four St. Vincent. That would be your final score today as uh, Celia Knappenberger checking in in relief for the final three innings. And uh, she saw nine. She retired nine. Also had the help of a pop-out double play as part of it. As part of it, yielded only one hit. We'll go to Ryan Briggs for the full pitching numbers. But uh, Celia Knappenberger with the save and uh, doing good work as uh, she held it down for St. Vincent, claiming a 7-4 win. Pitching lines for St. Vincent, the winning pitcher, Riley Asalone, four innings, seven hits, four runs, all earned, two walks, no strikeouts. But when St. Vincent rallied in the bottom of the fourth, not only took her off the hook, put her in line for the win, which she gets. She is now 5-5 five and five on the season. Knappenberger came out of the bullpen, three innings, one hit, uh, nine up, nine down because of the double play. So she only went through the order once. Knappenberger in her fifth relief appearance of the season, Gets her fifth save of the season. And for Teal, the loss goes to Madison Fulmer. Four innings pitched, seven hits, seven runs, but only three earned. One walk, no strikeouts. Fulmer now 7-11 and 11 on the season. And, you know, Fulmer deserved a better fate, uh, I, I think, Randy, uh, based on uh, just not a lot of help behind her defensively. Kelly came in, pitched two scoreless innings of relief, did not uh, allow a base runner. She came on in relief, but it is St. Vincent getting the win. The totals in this one for St. Vincent, seven runs, seven hits, no errors, four left on base for Teal, four runs, eight hits, three errors, and four runners left on base. Yeah, it's one for Fulmer, and really the Tomcats as a whole. Uh, Fulmer, as you said, deserved a better fate. It's one for Teal where uh, they're going to look back on this contest, unfortunately, and uh, think of some uh, plays, and not just physical errors, but some other plays where uh, fundamentally uh, things got away from them. And, and uh, as you said, uh, a lot of times when uh, you know, the team that makes the least mistakes comes away is, is the winner. And there are teams that play that way. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear coaches say, we don't want to try to do too much. And that's exactly what they mean by that. Just make the fundamental play. Don't try to make the, the excellent play, the highlight sports center. It, it's not always necessary. And, and when you play like that, as St. Vincent did today and really throughout the tournament, uh, they, they came away with the win 7-4 in the championship. And one of the big plays in the game, fourth inning, Teal had tied the game at three with back-to-back -back doubles. Uh, Ersprung doubled, then Kidwell doubled, but with one out, Kidwell cut down, uh, picked off by Ludwig, the catcher. Fulmer followed with a triple, Wojtek a single, but you kind of wonder, you never know how things will play out, but when you get a runner cut down out of scoring position with one out in the middle of a rally, that uh, you know, it was a two-run rally that gave Teal the lead 4-3, but could have been so much more. You never know how things will play out after that, but that was certainly a big play and a great throw made by the catcher Ludwig on that play to eliminate a runner in scoring position. Well, we find out. We I don't believe we're going to get the full list of the All Tournament team, but uh, Celia Knappenberger, and deservedly so, was the tournament MVP. So congrats to her, and, and really she earned the MVP just in today alone, uh, yeah. let alone what she did yesterday. 16 innings for Knappenberger today, two wins and a save, 11 hits, no runs allowed. 16 shutout innings today, two wins and a save. Celia Knappenberger, the tournament MVP, as, uh, as she should have been. And even she, she took the loss yesterday in the 3 nothing loss to Teal, but she pitched well in that game as well. I mean, Knappenberger was terrific, and uh, Bearcats are moving into the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. So congrats, uh, really, to all teams involved in this year's tournament. It was a fun one to uh, be a part of. And, uh, I just ran a trophy presentation. And, I'm uh, sorry. It was uh, a terrific run here for all parties involved. So uh, congrats to everybody.
and uh, especially the St. Vincent Bearcats as they move on to the NCAA tournament. 7-4 St. Vincent winners in uh, Game G, Game 7, if you will, for uh, Ryan Briggs, and uh, we'll say a final goodbye. Ryan, a pleasure working yes, with you on was. air this time. Yeah, we've uh, worked together a lot uh, you know, you, in, you, in various capacities, um, you know, in, in different things, be it uh, – I've done a few games with the Sports Network, and you've been behind the scenes, or of course, a number of your broadcasts, and I've been on the Sports Info side of things. So, paired up seven games in two days, a lot of good softball, a lot of fun, and uh, we'll be together tomorrow. Uh, neither of us will be on air, though, <laughs> for uh, your lacrosse broadcast from Grove City. I'll go back to uh, being a sports information director for the weekend, and uh, you'll be producing the doubleheader for, of lacrosse championships tomorrow. Absolutely. So stay tuned for that uh, this weekend. Tomorrow, uh, men's championship in lacrosse at Grove City, hosting Westminster at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Then at 6 o'clock at Westminster, WNJ facing off against the Titans in the women's lacrosse title tilt so that'll do it uh, big thank you to all parties involved we're going to see many of them tomorrow as well so uh, we'll save the final goodbyes for then and we also have baseball next week at w and j so busy a uh, couple of weeks uh, right now and we uh, enjoy every minute of it so seven four st vincent winners today in pac softball in the finale for ryan briggs i'm randy gore thanks to everyone here at st vincent we'll talk to you again soon on the pac sports network